you and Bruce for coordinating this entire community day. Tina and Bruce work really hard to put this lovely agenda. So very grateful. I am part of the, the lovely community day um, and happy to be here. Happy to be here. All right, I can help admit people in, Tina. See some people trickling in. Mm. Hi, Nam. Everybody make sure to mute yourselves, please. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Happens every, you know, every class. Someone leaves their mic on. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi, Beverly. All right, um, I'm yeah. gonna start sharing my screen. Felix? Oh, Felix is here. You see from uh, Self-Help for the Elderly? Hi, Felix. Is this the same Felix from Self-Help for the Elderly? Uh, he doesn't have his audio on, but it is. Oh, okay. Hi, Felix. We, we are very good partners. Um, we've, we, <laughs> we've taught many classes with uh, Self-Help for the Elderly. All right, I'm sh I just shared my screen. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, can everyone see my screen? There's um, two people, you know, shopping in a grocery store. There's Food Smarts class number two. Everyone see that? Can't see everyone. Yes. So hopefully this is, uh, <laughs> you all can see. All right, wonderful. So um, before I begin every class, I do a little tech check. So it looks like everyone can see my slides, um, hear my audio okay. Um, like Bruce mentioned, please remember to mute your microphone if you have some noise happening in your uh, home. And uh, you're welcome to unmute if you want to speak up. Uh, this class is very interactive. I'm not lecturing for an hour. Um, I want to hear from you and show your video only if you wish, but you don't have to. And for today's topic, um, I, I mentioned we're gonna talk about nutrition facts and food code dates. So if you are at home or have access to a kitchen right now, uh, I would love to um, take one minute and have everyone go in their kitchen or their pantry and find something, uh, find a packaged food that has a nutrition facts label. Most packaged foods have a nutrition facts label and bonus points if it has like a best by date or a use by date. And um, so take one minute to find something. I'm gonna actually stop sharing so I can kind of check your video to see you all are back. So I have a can of beans. It could be boxed pasta, a box of cereal, whatever you can find. If you're not at home, that's okay. Um, you could just follow along with my slides. Oh, look, Bruce is already ready. He has some graham crackers, very lovely. All right, looks like John and Ruby went to go get something. Hopefully you all are finding something. Um, and it's okay if you don't wanna get up and you just wanna sit back and relax. Oh, you got, you got some salt, I think, salt, some salt. I'm not sure of what spice it is. <laughs> yeah, salt. Salt? Okay, salt, great. Yep. Very nice. One of my favorite things to use in cooking. All right, everyone found something? All right, I see John is back. Beverly's back. Ruby's back. Jane is back. All right, we got some, we got some, we got some goods. Oh, we got some canned soup. I see Jane. All right, we're going to come back to that. I'm going to share my screen again. All right, thank you all for getting up from your seat and <laughs> finding something. I promise there is, there is a, a purpose for this. All right. I think everyone is very bright, so I'll skip this slide, but if you have trouble using your Zoom, please let us know, type in the chat box or speak up if you can't hear me or something. And these are some group norms slash uh, housekeeping things. Um, since there are a lot of people in the room, uh, we want to try to keep it at one mic. So one person speak at a time. If you do want to speak, please raise your hand. I love it when um, you all have a story to share or maybe some tips to share. But um, since we only have a short hour with each other, um, be sure to share the airtime <laughs> and utilize the chat box if you have any questions or comments and anything you share here today um, will be confidential. 
or any others, let me know. Otherwise, I'll move on. Okay, so this is today's agenda. So we're going to do some brief introductions and then go, we'll go right into today's topic. So going right into how to read those nutrition facts labels, how to understand the food code dates that is printed on packaged foods, have a video for a recipe demonstration and time for closing and Q&A, but you're welcome to ask questions throughout class. All right. So if you are new to these classes um, or didn't see me last month. Um, my name is Anna. I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, I'm a native to San Francisco. I studied nutrition at UC Davis and got my master's in New York City. A few fun facts about me. I love to hike. I love to bike around the city and I love to, to make people smile uh, and laugh. So hopefully I bring some joy to your day today. And I work for a little nonprofit called Leah's Pantry. We are a California-based nonprofit, <coughs> and uh, bless you. And we do public health nutrition programs. All right, so enough about me. I wanna to get to know a little bit about everyone else. Um, since we have a pretty big group, I might not have everyone speak up. <laughs> um, so maybe type in the chat box. So um, if your preferred name is not already shown up on Zoom, you can just type in, what is one thing you check for when you go shopping and you look at packaged foods? Um, is there something on the label that you check for or maybe something in the nutrition facts? So for me, what I like to do with packaged foods is uh, I check the sodium. I check the sodium. It is very shocking to see <laughs> how much sodium is in our foods. Um, some foods that are not even salty, like bread, could be really high in sodium. So that's something, that's one thing I check for. I'm going to check the chat box to see if anyone has shared, but anyone want to share? Oh, look. All right. We got some responses. So Tina checks for servings, calories for, per serving, cholesterol. Bruce checks for carbs. Yuka checks for sodium and sugar. Soluble fiber, very nice. Chandler, oh, don't worry. You don't have to show your video if you don't. Um, if it's broken, I'm sorry, your camera's broken. Uh, you check the carbs, total sugars, fat and sodium. Gary checks for sugars, less or... 10 grams per serving. Okay, very nice, very specific. All right, great. Thanks for sharing everyone. I see mostly sodium, sugar, fiber. Um, so very nice. We're gonna talk all about that today. So let's go into the nutrition facts. Oh, Diana says carbs and caps. <laughs> okay, so when you find packaged foods, you will see a nutrition facts label very similar to this. You might see this on the packaged foods that you brought today. Might not look as colorful, um, but it is color coded. And how I like to read nutrition facts is I break it down from the top. So starting number one, where it says start here, I like to look at servings, servings per container and serving size. Why do you guys think that's important? Why should we start there? Any ideas? You can unmute or put in the chat box. Uh, hi, I'm Ruby. I think it's because it's how, how much you're going to eat. One serving yeah. is just for you. So yeah, exactly, Ruby. So the amount you serve yourself is actually very different how it's measured on the nutrition facts label. So um, just because you put in a bowl <clears throat> doesn't mean it's actually the serving size. So it's really a um, good to pay attention to the servings per container and serving size. Most packaged foods have more than one serving. And if you pay attention to certain things like sugar and calories and fiber, and you're eating more than one serving, you might have to double the number or triple the number. All these numbers only reflect one serving. So for example, this label has two servings um, and all these numbers are just for one serving. So if I ate this whole container, uh, I have to double all the numbers. I have to double the calories. I have to double the sodium, the sugars, everything. <clears throat> so very, very important to check there, to check there. Great. 
So number two, and some of you mentioned you checked for this, so calories. And calories is just another way to, um, to measure energy. We, energy we get from food, energy we get from beverages. Calories aren't bad, but it is good to be cautious of the calories because you might be getting more energy than you, th uh, than you think. So number three, number three. Anyone have any questions so far? I am moving a little quickly. What's the count on calories? What's the count on calories? Um, what do you mean, John? Well, no more than so and so for. for oh, I see what you're saying. A great question. So everyone is a little different. So I don't want to give a prescription <laughs> for everyone, but um, the average person and men need a bit more calories than others. Um, it's around like 2,000, 2,000 calories. Um, for the average person, but the amount of calories you need really depends um, and varies person to person. So if you're older, you might not need as many calories as let's say a 20 year old um, or an 18 year old who's still growing. Um, you might need more calories if you're really active. So you might need to work with a dietitian, <laughs> um, maybe not in this setting because I don't want to give a prescription to everybody um, to work with you and calculate a certain number. Uh, your age matters, your activity level, um, and um, let's see what else. Your height, your height. So if you're really tall, you might need more calories than a, a shorter person. So it varies. It varies. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> okay. Number three, number three. Um, Number three reflects all the yellow nutrients. And these are some of the nutrients that you, um, some of you mentioned in uh, the chat box. So these are ones that we should watch out for, watch out for. Not that they're quote unquote bad for us, but um, because they do support good health, you know, cholesterol supports good hormone levels. And uh, we need a bit of fat, but the, the type of fat matters. We do need sodium, but not too much. So these are, these are ones that we should keep on the low end, the low end, so at a lower number. And I'll talk a little bit more about what low means. Well, so, yes, someone had a question? Yeah, me. Uh, you know this uh, saturated fat and the trans fat, uh, what's, uh -huh. the what's, what's the difference between the two? Oh, that's a great question, Ruby. This is a real scientific, um, but I'm glad you asked. So saturated fats are solid fats at room temperature. And these are mostly found in animal foods. So things like beef and pork, coconut oil. Um, it's also found in tropical fruits like coconut oil and palm fruit. Um, so those are solid at room temperature, um, butter too. And then trans fats, those are also found in animal foods too in a small amount, but the most, um, the foods that are higher and, or the most, um, most of the trans fat, excuse me, that we find in our food is actually artificially made. And uh, we had a few decades ago, we had a lot of trans fat in our foods like shortening um, and hydrogenated oils. And the reason why it was artificially made is because it helps uh, make food last, uh, last longer, excuse me. Um, but later on, we found out it's really not great for your heart health. It, it could raise your bad cholesterol and lower your good cholesterol. So I would advise to avoid as much trans fat as possible. Um, I think foods are doing a good job of trying to remove trans fats these days. So I wouldn't be too worried about the trans fats, but try to avoid it as much as possible. Um, it's found in a lot of highly processed foods um, and fried foods. So the type of fat matters. We do need fat, but I would avoid trans fats as, as much as possible. Uh, keep saturated fats on the low end. Um, I wouldn't actually worry too much about cholesterol. Um, eating cholesterol doesn't raise your cholesterol. It actually comes from eating too much saturated fat that could raise your cholesterol. So don't worry about cholesterol. Um, sodium, our bodies do need sodium, helps maintain a healthy blood pressure. But if you have too much, it can raise your, uh, sorry, blood pressure. And uh, what about olive oil? What kind of, is fat, uh, olive oil, some type of fat? Olive oh, great question, Ruby. Um, this is not on the label, but uh, your, your 
uh, give an example of uh, unsaturated fat. So if you ever, does anyone see that on their food label, by the way? Because sometimes that does not show up in some foods if it doesn't have it. So olive oil is a good example of unsaturated fat. So that's just the opposite of saturated. So think of opposite of solid is a liquid. So things, um, fats that come from li in a liquid form like olive oil, canola oil, those can be heart healthy. So um, the recommendations for eating the quality fat is eating more of the unsaturated fats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, those all those come from nuts and seeds too. Okay. Um, great question, good. Ruby. Olive oil is good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And there's many other types of oils too. Doesn't have to be just olive oil. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, where was I? Oh, so I want to point out sugars. Many of you mentioned sugars already, but I would also highlight like limiting sugars and sugar is great. The function of <laughs> sugar makes food taste good, but our bodies don't need too much. It does not give our body any nutritional value, but it makes food taste good. So I'm a fan. Um, number four, number four, anyone else have any questions before I move on? Hey, Anna. Yes. I yes, Gary. Gary. Uh, one thing I look for in sugars, uh, I also go back to the beginning for the serving size, because sometimes when you see like two different kinds of, say, breakfast cereal, uh -huh. they, might, they might both be like 10 grams of sugar on the label, uh -huh. but then they have different serving sizes. So like one cereal might be three quarters of a cup as a serving size, and the uh -huh. other one might be one cup. Yeah. So the one with... Uh, a three quarter cup serving size actually has more sugar, even though the label says the same amount. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point, Gary. Um, the food industry is so tricky because the serving sizes for things are so different. So you have to do a little bit of math when you're comparing things like that. But yeah, that's a great point. Um, I love that, Gary. I have a hard time sometimes when I <laughs> when I'm comparing those things and I um, do my best with the math. But yeah, great point. Great point. So look back at the serving sizes when you're comparing foods. OK, let's go to number four. And these are the nutrients that we need to get enough of that most average you know, people in our country don't get enough of. <laughs> so that is highlighting fiber, fiber. Um, vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. So these are nutrients that are uh, ones that we should aim for higher numbers, higher numbers. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to look for or how to tell if something is high or low in something. So on your foods, you will see at the right hand column is the daily value. This is all the sections that are highlighted in purple. And this is telling us the percentage of each nutrient that meets our daily needs. So we need fat. So this food is giving us, you know, about 18% of what we need every day. And how to tell if something is high or low in something. Um, this is a nice little reference. If there's anything you can remember from today is this. Um, so a quick guide to the daily value is 5% or less is considered low. And then 20% or more is considered high. So let's say for some of you who pay attention to sodium, is this food considered high or low? Twenty percent high. Thank you, Chandler. Gary says hi. Very good. So, um, so that tells me, okay, I might want to be cautious of this food. Maybe not eat the the whole container because that will mean I have to double the percentage, right? So it'll be forty percent. Um, so I might be want to be careful with this food if I'm watching my sodium. Um, some of you mentioned you look at uh, carbohydrates carbohydrates. This gives our body 10% of carbohydrates. And um, carbohydrates is important if you have diabetes. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that something you need to limit because part of carbohydrates is fiber too. So it really depends on the food. Um, how about fiber? If I wanted to boost my fiber, is this a good food? Is this a high source of fiber? No. 
No, it's zero. <laughs> so those are just some examples. Um, Jane, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm looking at my can of soup. Yes. It says it has about two servings per container. Okay. Serving size is one cup. Okay. Now I'm looking, for instance, I'm looking at fiber. So okay. it says per serving, it's three grams of okay. fiber. Okay. And per can, it's seven grams. So my question is that I would think it would double. It would be three and six, not three and seven. So I think what this can is telling me is there's probably slightly more than two oh, servings. Yes, yes. So some some of the new nutrition facts labels will show you all the calories and all the nutrients mm -hmm. per, per one serving, but then they have yeah. another column. It tells you for the whole can. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, um, sometimes they just round the number. You will notice the, the numbers are whole numbers. So they're not going to say 3.5. Uh -huh. So they're just rounding up. I, I assume. Uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The nutrition facts label is an estimation. It's not, it doesn't tell you exactly the amount it's going to vary a little bit, but it should be around this amount. Oh, okay. Good question. So confusing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions around the nutrition facts label? All right, let's move on. So let's do an activity where we, now that we've learned a little bit about the nutrition facts label, let's put it into practice. So let's pretend we all went to the grocery store and we are trying to look for a new granola bar. So let's, and we've come down to two choices. So let's call the one on the left A and the one on the right, B. So just quickly scan the nutrition facts labels and see which one is healthier. Which one would you choose? Which one would you choose? Hmm. Yolanda says B. Uh, why, why do you choose B, Yolanda? Because it has less sodium, it has less carbohydrates, and more pro protein. Less carbohydrates, less sodium, and a little bit of more protein. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Anyone else? Keith also votes for B. Keith also votes for B. Anyone else? Chandler says B. No one, no one wants to vote for A. A. Yuka says A. Barbara says A. A has more iron and potassium. Oh yeah, definitely has about double the amount of iron compared to B. And iron is good for making our red blood cells. So we definitely need to get more iron. Um, and potassium, certainly more than double, like triple the amount of potassium, which is uh, good for our heart health. All right. So a little bit about the nutrition facts labels that I didn't get to mention is the ingredients list. I didn't mention that, but that is definitely part of the nutrition facts label that uh, could be helpful to pay attention to. So what do you notice between A and B? Size. <laughs> yes, Jane, you hit the big one. A is certainly longer and has more new ingredients that I don't have in my pantry. Does anyone have calcium carbonate or I don't know, um, uh, niacinamide in their pantry? Most likely not. <laughs> but for B, I can definitely picture this in my kitchen or someone else's kitchen. So whole grain oats, almonds, raisins, honey, canola oil, cinnamon, salt, really simple, basic ingredients. So definitely B is a lot shorter. So reading the nutrition facts label also involves reading the ingredients list. Just because something has 
maybe a bit more nutrition on the nutrition facts label um, may not may not equal, um, you know, wholesome quality ingredients. So it's not always black and white. So we need to uh, be a little careful when we're reading packaged foods. Not that having a long ingredients list is considered um, a quote unquote bad thing. Most of those nutrients are actually vitamins and minerals. Some processed foods like bread um, uh, removed or um, the nutrients are removed. So vitamins and minerals are removed from certain refined breads. So sometimes they just add it back. So those long names are nothing to be scared of. Sometimes they add it back. Sometimes they add uh, vitamin A to milk to uh, make it a bit more nutritious. Um, so it's nothing to be scared of if you ever see a long ingredients list, but uh, really depends on what they're listing there. And other ingredients to look out for are hard hydrogenated fats or oils. Those are a source of um, trans fats. And there's lots and lots of names for sugars these days. So honey, fructose, corn syrup, artificial sweeteners. So maybe those are things that are um, not best to eat all the time. <laughs> so those are some ingredients I would look out for. Yolanda says less is best. <laughs> in most cases, yes, Yolanda, in my, in my opinion, um, I like to eat foods that are made of just a few ingredients. It tends to taste better to me. All right. I know I, you know, shared a lot today about nutrition facts, labels, and ingredients lists. And I know nutrition is confusing. We talked about a little bit of math and, you know, comparing things. So I hope you're not overwhelmed, but if you are, I have some tips for you. So just choose one or two things to focus on. So going back to the first question I asked you all, what is one thing you check for? Just focus on that. Just focus on that. You don't have to compare every little thing or look at every little nutrient. You'll be in the grocery store all day. So just choose one or two things. Maybe it's the servings. Maybe just pay attention to those for a while. And then when you're comfortable with that, maybe move on to maybe sodium or added sugars. Um, maybe you wanna just focus on fiber for helping um, support healthy blood sugar levels or cholesterol levels, or maybe you just wanna focus on eating more whole foods and sticking with the short list of ingredients. So those are just some ideas, but just choose one or two things it'll definitely be helpful <laughs> when you're shopping. I remember when I first learned about nutrition facts and I was comparing every little thing and I spent way too long in the grocery store. Anna, yes, yes. I have a problem with the sodium. I okay. Problem, I have a problem with the sodium because you know, they're different kinds. And I don't know, you know, you have the, uh, the sodium that iodine and then you have the sea salt. And then oh you have, yeah and then and then you have the kosher and oh the, and you and, and, and i don't know which is best that i should have is it all sodium is the sea salt and the kosher salt and the iron salt is that the same is it oh what? great question ruby i felt the same way when suddenly there was different salts so most of those salts are still salt i um i believe kosher salt is the one that with the less the least sodium. So if you are watching your um, blood pressure or heart health, um, you might benefit from kosher salt. That one just has a bit less sodium. The only difference between all those salts are um, the trace minerals um, and the price <laughs> and the color. So don't be fooled by some fancy, you know, pink Him Himalayan salt. It's not going to be more beneficial for you. It's just a little pricier and looks pink. Um, but um, if you are watching your blood pressure, I think the best choice would be kosher salt. Does that answer your question, Ruby? Hopefully that helps. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And salt is found in a lot of packaged foods too. So avoiding or limiting those, like um, a lot of canned foods have it, processed foods like chips and crackers. And as I mentioned, things that don't taste salty um, can add up to add up your, your sodium for the day. Like things like milk and bread, they don't taste salty, but they actually have uh, a moderate amount of sodium. So check, check that um, section of the facts label um, if you care about sodium um, next time you, you prepare a meal. 
Uh, Anna, but what about the iodine? And the body's supposed to have iodine. And I know there's some salt that have iodine. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Our body does need iodine. Um, we added that because we had a diff because decades ago before our farming techniques were not so great, um, our, many people had a deficiency in iodine. So we added it to iodine and now it's found in so many foods. Um, we, we don't have that problem anymore. So most likely if you're not getting it from your salt, you're getting it from other foods, it's added back to other foods. Um, so if you do have a, um, um, a thyroid issue, you might want to talk to your doctor about that because if you are low on iodine, uh, you might benefit from iodized uh, salt. All right. Great questions, Ruby. Anyone else have any questions before we move on? Okay. So using that technique, just focusing on one or two things. Um, who brought this up? Was it Gary? Someone brought this up. Great example, just shopping for cereals. Um, so luckily this cereal has the same serving sizes, uh, but make sure you check the, the serving sizes if you are comparing two things. So most cereals have a lot of sugar and not a lot of fiber. So those are two things that might be helpful if you're shopping for, for cereal. So very quickly looking at sugar and just fiber, which one do you think is healthier? B, yes, very good. Very quickly, I can see, oh, B has zero added sugars and a lot more fiber. 14% is pretty good. Um, so hopefully that helps you next time you're comparing things or shopping. Just choose one or two things to focus on. I promise you, it'll be a lot smoother when you go grocery shopping. Okay. Let's go on to food safety now. So we're going to do a little quiz before we talk about those dates. So I have eight statements here, and you tell me if it's a myth or a fact. So number one, microorganisms like bacteria and yeast are always harmful. Myth or fact? Barbara says myth, very good. So what are some examples of beneficial bacteria or yeast? So yeasts are made to make bread. So not all yeasts are harmful. I'm a big fan of bread. So I like that function of yeast. Um, you can find beneficial bacteria in uh, foods like yogurt or um, some cheeses and a lot of fermented foods like kimchi, miso, uh, tempeh, sauerkraut, things like that. So not all microorganisms are harmful. So very nice. All right, number two, once raw vegetables start to wilt or soften, they're inedible. Myth or fact? Myth or fact? Myth. Yes, very nice. You guys are, this is too easy for you all. <laughs> you guys are too smart. But yes, you don't have to throw away raw vegetables that start to wilt. This tends to happen to my carrots or celery. They're kind of like sad looking, but you can soak them in the ice bath and they'll perk up really nicely or just cook them. Um, but be careful with that one. If it's slimy, you might want to throw those away. Okay, number three, number three. If a potato has green spots or sprouts, it should be thrown out. Yolanda says myth. Oh, Gary says fat. Oh, Barbara shared a nice little tip. You all should hear it out. <laughs> um, but yes, this is a fact. This is a fact. So if a potato has green spots or sprouts, um, it could, it's a sign that it has some toxins. So I know some people like cut around it and throw it away, um, but I would be careful. I would be careful with those. If you have a space for a garden, those are great. The, that's um, a, a sprouted potato is really good for growing more potatoes. You can use it as a seed, but um, I would be careful about eating sprouted potatoes and uh, best to throw those out. All right, number four. Yes, you don't want to plan it. Um, all right, number four. Any food with mold or rot on it must be thrown out. Must be thrown out. Yes, Yolanda says. I would challenge that a little bit. So I would say that part is, um, there's some truth in that. You shouldn't 
you shouldn't eat the mold or rotten part, of course, but you can save part of the food. Um, I would cut an inch or more around it just because mold and rot spreads where you can't see it. So cut a nice chunk out of it, at least an inch away from it. And you could most likely, um, it's safe to eat the other parts of uh, the vegetable or fruit or bread. Uh, but taste it before you try that. One time I had a bell pepper that was moldy. So I just cut around it. The rest of the bell pepper looked fine. But when I tasted it, it tasted like mold. So be careful with that one. <laughs> All right, number five, number five. Oh, <laughs> Keith, that's okay. I think you're gonna be okay. It will, it could cause problems if you do eat a lot of sprouted potatoes. So some people in my class have told me they just eat it, but they um, cut around it, uh, but be very careful with it. Be very careful with it. Um, next time, just don't risk it. Okay, number five, any food that has a new bad smell should be thrown out. Yolanda says fact. Gary says fact, very nice. So yes, you guys are on it. So your food should smell the same as you prepared it, as you bought it, should not smell new or bad. It is a sign of spoilage. So um, that one is a fact. All right, number six, any food that has bugs on it should be thrown out. Six, Yolanda says it's fact. Anyone else? Ooh, Chandler says myth. So this one I would, um, I would say myth and the fact, it depends on the bug. So if it's little, um, if you've ever seen this before, these are little bugs called aphids. They're kind of green and got little legs and they're usually found on organic produce. Um, and those are harmless, just wash them away. And, but I would be careful with this. If your food has been infected with like worms or something, you might notice like a hole through your apple or Brussels sprouts or something. Uh, that that could make you sick. So it depends on the bug, <laughs> it depends on the bug. Number seven, eating straight from a storage container. So maybe drinking from a juice carton or a milk carton uh, makes the food inside go bad faster. Is that a myth or a fact? Yes, fact, very good. Hopefully none of you do that at home, unless you're living at home, doesn't, doesn't matter. Or it matters a little bit because there are millions, well, actually trillions of bacteria in our mouth. So when you do that, you're transferring bacteria to the food inside. So that will spoil the food faster. So make sure you just you know transfer it to a cup or a separate container. I know it's easy, but uh, it takes seconds to just transfer it from the, the, the storage container. All right, last one. It is dangerous to eat a can of unopened food that is past to date. Myth or fact? Myth, yay, very good. I'm gonna talk all about that. So hopefully the foods that you brought today have a, a code date that we can all use for this next activity. But before we begin, I wanna just define those terms you might see on um, canned goods or packaged goods. So if your can or box of food has best if used by or best before, all that means is this food will taste the best at this date or before this date. Nothing to do with the safety, has just to do with the flavor and quality. Um, for a sell-by date, you might find this on your dairy, like things like milk or cheese or yogurt. Um, and this all this means is the store has to sell the food by this date, nothing to do with the safety. And you might see expiration dates on things like medicine, baby formula and vitamins. Um, those you should actually just um, um, abide by. <laughs> those are actually not advised to consume after the date. So uh, be careful with the expiration dates on those foods. But the best if, if used by or sell by dates are perfectly fine. Uh, Ruby, you have a question? Yes, you know, some of the stores, you know, yes. they like Trader Joe's, some of the good stores, uh -huh. you know, when they, I guess, discard some of that food. Now, I know that, that that's a good store. They have good quality of food. But like you say, they have to sell it by a certain date. I guess past that date or whatever, 
then they give it to charitable organization or whatever to give it to people that are less fortunate that can afford. Mm -hmm. People that assume get these food, is that still good to eat? Yes, that's a great question, Ruby. So food pantries and food banks normally get a lot of donations like places from Trader Joe's and Starbucks. And you will see foods that are past the sale by day, but uh, often it is still safe to eat. Guaranteed that it was stored properly because most of those foods have to be refrigerated. So as long as they were stored and transferred safely, it should be okay. Yeah, great question. That comes up a lot if you get, um, you're in a brown bag program or get food from a food pantry or a food bank. You will see foods that are past the date, but it's often okay to eat. So it really depends on the type of food. Some foods last a bit longer. So for example, butter. Um, if you get butter, um, it is good for, or safe to eat two to three months past the date. And this all means, um, this is all for foods that have not been opened. So it's still sealed and nicely um, in a tightly air packed, airtight package. <laughs> um, and if you put it in the freezer, it'll last up to a year past the date. Um, for bread, it's a little, um, a little shorter shelf life. So up to a two weeks after the date, if you put in the refrigerator, but up to three months in the freezer. Let's look at um things like canned beans um, i have a can of beans in here and it's um safe to eat up to three years past the date past the date uh eggs this one sometimes shocks people but it's good um past the date four to five weeks four to five weeks so i'm still eating eggs from april it's fine um <laughs> but one way to tell if an egg has spoiled is if you put in a little glass of water and it floats that's um that's a sign that it's a bad egg it should sink it should sink um, milk milk is good for one week past the date and if you have those um uh tetra packed car carton of milk that is on usually in the dry goods section those are good for six months um, one week is for the regular milks that are in the refrigerated section. All right, um, now I wanna look at um, a little bit with your food. So does anyone wanna share their food with us and the date that is printed on it? So my beans was best by January, 2017. So <laughs> this, this can of beans is four years past the date. So. I'm not too sure I'm gonna open it and see. I might be careful and have to cook it. Um, but does anyone else wanna share their food? What yes, if you brought uh, soup? Uh, I have some spaghetti. Oh yeah, spaghetti. Okay, Ruby. And it is expired uh, December 14th, 2023. 2023, okay. Is it a spaghetti sauce or the spaghetti uh, noodles? It's a, uh, the spaghetti. No. Uh, oh, noodles. Okay. So I will share this chart with everyone. It's three pages worth of foods and you can use it as a nice little guideline. But things like spaghetti noodles, they're very dry. So um, bacteria and microorganisms like to like to grow in places where it has some moisture. So I wouldn't be worried about your pasta. Those are good for two to three years past the date. Um, if you haven't opened it yet, if you haven't opened, if you, if you opened it, I would use it within a few years too. Um, but your pasta will last pretty long, pretty long Ruby. So, um, I wouldn't be too worried about your, your, your spaghetti. You might even finish it <laughs> before it expires. But what does it mean when it says slow dried? It says on your slow dried. Slow dried? Uh, slow dried, D-R-I-E-D. I mean, I guess a slow temperature, uh, um, uh, it's cool. a, well, a quality, a superior quality pasta. It's slow dried. I don't know, I didn't know pasta had a fast dried and a slow dried. <laughs> Me neither, Ruby. I think it has to do with um, when you make fresh pasta and then they dry it, maybe it was slowly dried and that means um, maybe it's a higher quality because maybe if it was fast. But it says superior, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, or maybe it's just trying to sell you something. I don't, I'm not actually familiar with that term, slow dried. I'll have to look that up. Well, That's funny. They probably tried to dry it in the very humid weather and it doesn't dry very fast. 
Oh, I'm just yeah. Kidding. I'm kidding. I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I believe you, John. Don't mess with me. I believe I'm very gullible. Um, all right. Um, anyone else have a food they want to share? A food they want to share? This is a really great guide if you're ever unsure that you know maybe you found something in your kitchen that's past the date already. So don't throw it away just yet. Um, once I email this to Tina and she sends it to everyone, you can use this as a reference. Um, a lot of food waste comes from misunderstanding the, these food code dates. These didn't exist until a few decades ago. Before then, we just used our senses. Um, but now that there's dates on our food, people think that it's expired and a lot of food ends up going to waste. Uh, but it's perfectly fine to eat most of the time, most of the time. All right. Anyone else want to share a food they have? Otherwise, we can move on. Um, let's let's do some. Let's go through some examples. So let's say I have a can. I have some canned meatballs and canned uh, ham or spam, and the date is April fourteenth, two thousand fifteen. Is this safe to eat? No. No, it's a little too old. Canned meats and poultry are safe to eat uh, two to three years past the code date. So things like canned chicken um, uh, is okay to eat two to three years past the date. So this one is a little too old, a little too old. All right, canned tomato soup. I think someone had this in our group. So this one is April 14th, 2020. So about one year, a little over a year. Safe to eat? No. no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, unopened canned high acid foods. So things with tomatoes are a little higher in acid and um, they're safe to eat one to two years past the date. Other uh, lower acid foods like canned beans um, are two to three years. And the reason is because things like tomatoes with high acid, they could, um, break down or interact with the, the tin in the can. So it's best to eat it um, within one to two years. But you know, Anna, I mm -hmm. have um, a very uh, step, step, uh, skeptical of eating at people's house now, especially when they have canned goods, because a lot of people, they may not look at the date. You know uh -huh. how people store food and they get things on sale and they, you know, they put it up there and uh, they don't use it often. So when guests come over, whatever, they say, okay, I use this. They just get the can, open it up. You don't know what date it is because they're not even conscious of the date. They're just thinking that, okay, I want to cook this and I cook that. And I don't got, you know, and I, I become very skeptical because when you don't start feeling good, you don't know what's causing it and you you don't think of maybe that it's an old, old can or something uh, uh, that they don't mix, you know, that people put beans and stuff and salads and stuff like that. People have a variety of cooking things now, mixing everything together and you don't know what's good, what's old and what's used. It's, it's scary to eat now unless you really know, unless you prepare it yourself. A restaurant is really hard and dangerous, yeah. and dangerous I think. Yeah, yeah, it, it has a lot of risks when you're not the one doing the cooking and you're trusting someone else to do it for you safely. So if you have a good friend and they know what to do in the kitchen, <laughs> um, I would trust them to prepare you safe food to eat. But uh, I understand, Ruby, it is kind of scary. It is kind of scary. Um, hopefully your, your friends know how to cook and won't try to intentionally make you sick. <laughs> I think, I, I don't think uh, anyone has that intention to, to hurt you, Ruby. But yeah, I get it. It's, it's hard and scary. Okay, let's skip a few. Um, and I want to go to our little trivia question. So, all right, this is my little trivia question. So how long does an open jar of honey last for? Honey, anyone have honey? How long does this last for if it's opened? Three years. Three years, John says. All right. Anyone? Anyone want to top that? I would say. In, I would say forever. Forever. I mean, yes, I mean, Ruby. Oh. <laughs> you get. You get. Uh, ten points. Um, if it's safely and naturally sourced, so don't get any water in it. Don't store it in. Um, you know, sunlight. 
Um, and if it's uh, sourced from good bees and good honey, uh, it could last very long, uh, forever, almost forever. Um, what, crystal uh, what makes it that way, uh, Anna? Well, what makes it uh, that, that, that uh, uh, keep its value for, for, for that? That's long? a great question, Ruby. Part of it has to do with oh. the honey's chemistry. It is um, really high in sugar, and microorganisms don't like to grow uh, where there's lots of sugar because it um, doesn't have a lot of moisture, so they won't grow and thrive there. This is why things like jams also last pretty long, but definitely has to do something with the honey's chemistry. Um, and yes, Gary, you, 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 you mentioned the point, no moisture. Don't, don't get any water in your honey. All right. So my main message with this is unopened and undamaged foods are often safe to eat after its uh, printed date. And Yuka pointed out something really important too with canned goods. Um, as long as it's not punctured or swollen or bulging, it's also uh, most likely safe to eat after its printed date. But like I mentioned, we never had these dates a few decades ago. These are all new. Um, so please use your senses when it comes to, you know, uh, checking if the food's safe to eat as well. See if anything's growing on it. Use your sense of smell and um, do your best to touch it. Or sorry, taste it. <laughs> okay, time for our little cooking demonstration. So I have a few options today. I have a tomato white bean soup. I have a chickpea dip. And I have... Um, tuna boats. So these are all using maybe some canned goods you have at home. So does any, anyone have um, a request to watch something together? Maybe a soup or a dip, tuna boat, dip. All right, Tina votes for dip. Let's go to the dip. Oops. All right, so this is our tuna boats recipe. It is a little fast, I will warn you. I will uh, send the link to Tina so you can rewatch it. Um, but here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Lee and I am a nutrition educator with Leah's Pantry. Today we will be making tuna boats. This recipe can be found on our eatfresh.org site. All right, now let's get cooking. Nice little refreshing tasty snack. You can also use that tuna mixture to make a nice tuna uh, sandwich um, as well. All right, let's move on to the next few slides. So eatfresh.org is our recipe and cooking and lifestyle page. You can find a lot of um, cooking and nutrition information there as long as um, along with those recipes. Uh, we have a little meal plan that um, gives you some ideas on how to use some canned foods that might be in your kitchen. And uh, that is it for today. I will send all the handouts from today's lesson to Tina and everyone who is here today. And if you're a San Mateo resident, you earn $6 vouchers for coming to class. So thank you, you for today. <laughs> thank you for the, the cheer. Um, and I will be mailing these after the last class. So the, the last class will be the next community day next month. And you will get a voucher guide in the mail. Um, and you can use these vouchers to buy fruits and vegetables um, at local farmers markets. So in San Mateo County, there's a few. Um, you can also use these in different Bay Area counties like San Francisco. Um, make sure you check online um, to make to check if the location maybe has moved 
Um, some have moved to bigger parking lots for uh, social distancing. And not all of these farmers markets are open. Some are only open, you know, April through December, the summer year round. Uh, many people tell me they like to go to the one in Ceremony Mall or the one at San Mateo College, but go to the one that's closest to you. And the vouchers never expire. So you can use them whenever. If you want to wait until, uh, you know, a certain time of year, <laughs> you, can, you can use them then. Well, Anna, what about Oakland? Have any in Oakland? Oakland, um, Oakland, let me check. Uh, I have to double check with Oakland. I think it's, Oakland is part of Alameda County, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, then I think so. I'll have to look at the guide. Um, give me one second, actually. I have the guide. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, can I make an announcement real quick, Tina? Yes, please. Uh, the Aurora Mandolin has canceled for this afternoon's show due to the wind. Yeah, it's just too windy here and they have microphones. And so just gonna let everyone know we've canceled it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Bruce. Was it a music event? Yeah, and they're just, oh. there's like 12 mandolin players. I mean, if it was a rock and roll show or something where we plug in, but since mm. the, phone, the wind would just, just crush it and it's super, super duper windy here today. Yeah, it's windy here too. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I wish I played an instru instrument. I would play for, I would play something for you all. I have a little keyboard, a little piano. I can, right on, let's hear it. <laughs> I can play half the song. I, I need to practice, but uh, this was my last slide. Just want to thank Tina and Bruce and everyone from the Trevandi community. The next and last class will be the next community day. And, and we're going to talk about food storage and a little bit about composting. If you have a request to talk about something else, uh, please email me. And that is it. A round of applause for everyone. Thank you so much for giving me your oh time today. You could have done something else. Um, and I have the uh, guide with me, Ruby. Um, I think you're the one who asked. So yes, the vouchers work in downtown Oakland's farmer's market, the one at Kaiser Oakland and Old Oakland, West Oakland, many parts of Oakland. So yes, it works in Oakland. Thank you so much, Anna. No, thank you, Tina. Thank you, everyone, Before for everybody showing go, up today. Help, help uh, take our poll, quick poll. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much, you, Anna. Tina. Thank we'll you, everyone. Soon. Stay well. Have a great okay. rest of bye your bye. community Thank day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. That was very, uh, I learned something new every day. I know. We should ask her about um, MSG and all the hidden names now. Uh, I know. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you, see you after lunch. All right. Take care. Bye.